Hey, everybody. I'm going to put you in this one. Okay. So I don't need my earbud. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're going to be echo, echo, echo. So I can just un. Okay. You'll be able to hear me through there. Um, I think I need a little Hello, hello. Sena? Mm. Try again. There it goes. Okay, okay hold on. You can share the screen too. Yep, it's sharing right now. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, please. How's everyone doing this morning? I know what's going on. Testing one, two, three. Sorry. Apple. Okay, talk. Good morning, everyone. It's okay. I'm muted in this one. I'm okay. How we have it? Can you hear me come through? I'm sure. I don't know. I got my earbud just in case. Okay, I need someone who give me a thumbs up if you guys Is can hear us. Live out there? All good. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, perfect. Great. So welcome, you guys. Uh, Todd is going to start. You can see him there. I'm going to be trying to monitor on the chat and the um, anything that you guys say. So please, let's make sure you mute yourself, and then we'll get started. Can you share the screen with them? OK, so this is just, They're just saying you. for the three of us. Yes. All right. Is it 11, or are we going to wait for everybody to show up late 15 minutes like they normally do? Uh, let's do five minutes. So three more minutes and we'll start. Anybody watching basketball, March Madness? We gotta get some more life in you guys. Yes, I can see the photo, the pictures. Okay. 
the city view. Mm -hmm. Oh, so it's just fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they see you in this camera, and then the screen they're looking at it, okay. like in the background. All right. No one's alive out there. There's some problem. All right. So we have a couple of people join already. Um, let's see if you guys can hear as well. Please let me know. If you guys cannot hear me or for any reason my screen is not up, please, please let me know. I can hear you really well. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks so much. You're going to have to um, turn off the button uh, because it's going to have echo. Or close your door, that's it. Oh, yeah. Oh, I can mute it, right? Mm -hmm. It's because they're too close to each other, so they create echo. And then just close it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All righty, let's see. It's 11.03. Two more minutes and we'll get started. If you guys have any questions while we are on the meeting, please please write it on the chat or um, I think we can raise our hands in this one. Yes, we can raise our hand and then we'll give a little break and we can talk about it. Yeah, we can do a Q and A on this as well. So any questions, we'll try to get those answered. And then we'd like to get some feedback when we're through about what what's good for you, what else you would like, because this meeting is for you. We're here to serve you, help you, help your clients, help the team. And that's the sole purpose for this. All righty, let's see. All righty, it's 11. In 0455, so I think we can get started. Maho's giving us the hook. Okay. Anybody watching March Madness right now? Most of you know that I'm a college football fan. <laughs> but I've been watching basketball because I'm from Western Washington. Gonzaga, the number one team in the country, has just tore through the tournament. They're in the final four. And they're a little school of 7,000 people on the Idaho border. We see people around the world watching March Madness. So what if we treated our clients with as much interest and enthusiasm as we do a sporting event? You think they would like it? Would they be more thankful for you? Would you help them? Of course you. So today we're going to do a case study. We're doing a case study. This is actual client of Dow Pams. And the initial facts were they owned a primary residence in Mountain House. The value had gone up. They didn't have a ton of equity in it. And they owned a duplex in Bailey City that they inherited. Their goal initially was to sell their mountain house, downsize into a new primary residence and use their savings and income to help their mom in a better system living place. So now talk with them and discovered that they had this duplex. Now they were getting about 3,500 net on that duplex. And it was worth, I think, I believe she sold it for a million two fifty. So we came up with a strategy of finding them a commercial property that would give them sufficient income to pay for the system living. That was their sole purpose in starting this whole transaction. So we sold the, the duplex. 
We did a 1031 exchange. Dow also sold their house, the mountain house, and bought them a new home, a new model home in Tracy Hills along the 580 where it goes into five, where they're bulldozing dirt like crazy and throwing up a million homes. And we kind of backed into this. They had an income figure that they wanted to come up with. They needed just a little over 6,000 a month from an investment property. They initially wanted to put down 900,000 on the, the investment property. And I suggested that they just put 800, keep 100 in the bank, because we were a little bit short on what they really wanted. And I said, if you drop $500 out of there, it's going to last you for 10 years. And it's good to have money in the bank. So they put $200,000 down on the new home in Tracy Hills. We put eight hundred dollars on the property out of state. And they had a couple hundred grand left in the bank. So how did this strategy turn out. Their current, their personal mortgage on the mountain house was roughly $3,500. Their income from the duplex, $3,500. So they had no residual income from their properties. The new home in Tracy Hills, I'm using about 3,500, I think it was slightly less. They're now getting $6,300 a month in their investment property. They get $2,800. And the rents on the investment property goes up 2% every single year. So the residual income almost paid for more. What was their goal? They wanted to have, have enough money for their mom and their sister living center. They got their 6,000 bucks. So let's look at what this, so now I'm gonna compare a single family home in Santa Monica. And I just looked at this data yesterday. Surprisingly enough, there's not, not one home in San Ramon under a million dollars. Not one. And the rents are about 3,500 bucks average on that. And I used the cheapest price, a million, which you couldn't buy. And we all know from listening to you that it's going to have multiple offers. A friend of ours, their house sold for 250 over asking. So if you put 35, if you buy a home in San Ramon and you put 35% down, and I did the interest rate on loan, 30 year loan, insurance, property taxes, you're going to lose 12 grand a year. Now you may have some, some appreciation. And maybe for one of the high techies at Google or Facebook, losing 12 bucks works for them because they're long-term. Point that I'm trying to make is we have clients in different areas of the spectrum. If they're high techy young people, then they may want to have losses working with their tax person to help minimize their tax fine. But if they're getting along in years, maybe they want income. Maybe they want to take a couple of their homes. Maybe they want to pay off their primary residence. Maybe they want to do reverse mortgage and buy an investment property and have income that way. There's different strategies that we can do to help people. Maybe they want to go on a vacation. Maybe they want to buy a second home. Lots of options here of what they can do. The point is, 
by talking with your clients, you can find out what the real heart of the matter is. And I've recommended this before, but your title person or your mortgage broker or you with some work can find out what additional properties they have. And then by having a discussion, you can find out what's really important to them. Because with the run up that there is, I know a few agents right now are talking with clients that has multiple single family residences. And their strategies are starting to change where they're saying, man, I've had this huge run up. I don't want to pay any capital gains. So we can exchange them or they're tired of dealing with tenants. We can exchange them into something. And by the way, did I say on that investment property, it's a triple net building, which means a tenant pays for everything. Taxes, insurance, upkeep. They just get a check once a month or a wire transfer. So again, it's back to what is your clients comfortable with and what do they really want to do? So, and then I'm going to use this example also on this million dollar home. Well, I bought it in 06. It's for $400,000. I'm okay. All right. Paid four hundred thousand, but it's worth a million dollars, and so we call that an opportunity cost. They could be making X, but they're only making this much, or they could take that money and buy something else that will return more, or they could pull equity out and buy another product. So again, multiple strategies based on what they're seeking. And the only way to know what they're seeking is to chat with them. I know we're just starting to open up, but sometimes it's really cool to just have coffee with some of your clients or adult beverage or whatever, <laughs> depending on who they are, and just have a discussion. Hey, how's Sarah doing at college? Maybe they need money to help her get through school so she doesn't have $200,000 in student loans. There was an interview during the basketball game. This, this girl has $200,000 in student loan debt. That's ugly. All right. So I'm a finance person. If you didn't know it, we have a gifted marketing person here that made all these really cool graphics. Oh, take it back. <laughs> <laughs> and she enhanced my little slideshow spreadsheet. So we talk about triple net buildings and I use the example, even though they're corporate owned, this freaking in and out burger across the road where we can look out our window of the Santa Ramon office and the line is backed up to the gas station starting about 11 o'clock. And I've gone by here at midnight before and the line is out there on the road before too. You can see it from the freeway. So that would be an awesome building though. But COVID didn't impact them. Nope. And you're talking to junk food aficionados here. Anyway, as you drive around like a Wells Fargo, a CVS, a Tractor Supply, Home Depot, Walmart, these are all triple Starbucks. These are all triple net buildings where the corporation talks to a developer and says, based on our demographics, we want to put a new building in Mountain House. Developer builds it to the specs. They already have a lease in place. And some of these Walmart leases go out to 99 years. If I remember correctly from business school, that's a lot of people have a lease. So they build these buildings to their specifications. And then they're a triple net building, which means the tenant is basically renting the building from you 
but they take complete control of it. And you're just the owner, get your building paid for. And we haven't even touched on the tax benefits of this, but those are triple net benefits. Now, a lot of people have made millions of dollars in single family rentals, duplexes, triplexes, fourplexes, 10 to 500 unit apartment buildings. It's whatever your comfort is. We also have people now where they own multiple rental properties. Their children have gone to school, they're doctors, lawyers, high techies. They don't want anything to do with the rat race of real estate because they've seen what they've gone through. So they don't want to deal with tenants at three o'clock in the morning. My furnace is broken. But these buildings would be ideal for them. And it also helps the parents transition to less ongoing day-to-day -day management and getting those, those kind of phone calls. Again, back to what a personal person's risk structure, desires, and abilities are. My other favorite thing is owner user abilities. And I just think every business owner, if it's possible, should own their own building, especially with SBA financing. Get into it with cheap, long-term financing, 15, 20% down, just like residential. And it's just an awesome way to go. I think of two examples on an owner user. I think of this dentist, friend of ours, they've leased their building for at least 30 years. Orthodontists are different than general practitioner dentists because you might only go to orthodontists once or twice in your life. General practitioner, every six month cleaning, we gotta do this, we gotta do <laughs> x-rays, oh, that crowd's Getting loose on you. So our friend, he's been in this lease for long term. I'm, their practice is not going to be worth much, and they have nothing from the hundreds of thousands of dollars they've paid in. Think of another example in Hayward where I helped a buyer by a auto repair business building. The seller said, I want to sell my business with the building. My buyer was like, I don't care about the business. Now he does. So the guy had been there for 20 years. Warehouse was paid for. Business sold for 125 grand. Building sold for a million and a half. So what if you would have rented for those 20 years? 125 grand. When I said that my buyer didn't care about the business, he since has been able to enhance that client base. And now he's like, man, that really worked out well. I didn't want to do that, but now it worked out well. I helped my brother-in-law a few years ago buy a commercial condo in Pleasanton. He's an electrical contractor. And this is for him maybe the best unit in the building because you come around the back side, you pull straight forward between two buildings and you back straight in with his trailer. If any of you ever back the trailer, which I do all the time, you know that if you can pull in straight and back straight in, it's much easier than doing it at a 90 degree angle, especially if you're pulling on the trailer. So that building has gone up. But what's cool about owner user, and my disclaimer, David, is I'm not an attorney, I'm not a tax professional, but I do know enough to say this is my understanding, but we always want our clients to get feedback from their tax people or their attorney. So you buy these owner user buildings in an LLC, 
and then you lease it to your company. And depending on your tax person, there are significant advantages to this. Because every building for your own use is a special use building. So maybe you remodel that office every couple of years. Maybe you're buying equipment. We have retail, office condos, office buildings, contractor yards, auto repair, medical, you name the gamut. And when I mentioned the SBA, as long as you use 51% of the building for your own use, that's considered an owner user, owner user. And there's ways to make that happen. So maybe you buy a larger building and you rent out part of it, but then you use that space down the road as you grow, or you just keep leasing it. Yeah, the different strategies there as well. But this is something that we all should be talking to anybody that owns a business because it's a huge opportunity. Most people don't know about the extreme financing of this. They don't know about the tax benefits. So again, working with lawyers and CPAs and tax professionals, we can develop a strategy for someone. And ultimately these strategies make people wealthy. Go back to the guy in here. Would you rather have 125 grand? But you're going to have oh, a bonus, a million pop. If you don't know the answer to that question, you're probably in the wrong business. Right, guys? Yep. Deep. <laughs> so, just some questions. I know Arnie was out door knocking in his neighborhood. Do you own any real estate that you're planning on looking at moving? Oh yeah, I have this little section in the apartment building in Oakland. I don't know if Arnie's on here today or not. Mm, let's see. That was here. Arnie is in. Okay. Have you ever considered an additional investment property? Again, your lender, your title company, tech home inspectors, contractors, they can all be sources of people that can give you information on properties. You can search your tax records. If you find somebody that has an LLC, you can go on and find search that way. We have some stuff that's on market and off market. There are some self-directed IRAs and 401ks, but you really need to have probably a million and a half bucks in there to make that work. Otherwise, it's just, the numbers just don't work. And then we know that some people complain about the 750K interest limitation. I don't know if that's gonna get changed in the new tax law. They can complain about that, but there's no limitation on commercial investment property or single family investment public. You can buy the Transamerica Tower and have a million, $100 million loan every single time you get not. So just different things to consider. So that's where I would focus is, I know everybody's talking about getting additional listings. Cool. We have a question. Rich is asking, what is commercial corner? In the old break room, we had the glass wall and we had the corner that we wrote listings on. Mm -hmm. Now it's on our website. We need to get that updated again. But we had that. It's, uh, it is. It is open in our website. So if you guys go to rgfuture.com and then click on the property search, you're gonna see residential listings and under that one, it says commercial listings. You guys can always click on it and see. Uh, maybe I can show you. Let me so, see. Hang on, okay. so right now there's two really good properties that I'm aware of that I would look and buy into myself. There is a auto body repair shop up in Sonora in the foothills. It's a six cab and the 
current owner would be a sale lease back. He would do a 10 year lease with 3% annual increases, triple net building. And then after year five, he wants the option to buy it back. And there'll be a built in price that he can buy it back, probably a bump up every single year. So it would be a pretty good deal. And then we also have another urgent care for sale, same, it's almost identical to what Dow's clients that we, we bought this for, 12 years remaining on the lease, two five-year options, brand new building, 7% cap rate, which is really good. Those are the two best deals that I'm aware of right now. So for everyone and on the chat, I put the link and then you just click on it and it's going to show you the different properties that he's talking about. Where's my chat? Okay, you want to do a QA? I do a QA. All righty. So feel free to unmute yourself, ask your questions. Um, pretty much the floor is yours, guys. Ask any questions. Todd is here to um, answer anything that you might want to. Like getting deep more of, on his presentation, or like if you have any like technical questions, maybe he can um, assess you better on that. So feel free to unmute yourself. See. Uh, I have a question. Can I you just, hear me? I, yes, we can okay. hear you. All right. So I have a, a client who wants to put an investment. Um, um, people together like uh, three people um, they're buying a single family house which can be converted into a duplex but uh, one of the uh, partners or or this one of this investment group one will put the down payment one will take the loan and one would be the uh, sweat equity partner it, is that feasible to form an investment group and what kind of investment group can we form? Can we, can we form a partnership? And, and the thing is the, um, the one who's putting the down payment would like to exit in three years. Great question. You're gonna wanna have an attorney draft this up for you because there's, people uh -huh. do generally form LLCs for these type of arrangements. Uh huh. All the parameters need to be listed, and there'll be some more that we haven't even thought of, such as how do we get out? Who? How do they share the profits? How does it get paid back? All of those uh -huh. factors. And you're going to need a real estate attorney, which David's person that we have here is a real estate attorney. So oh, you, okay. I. Uh -huh. Generally, we see LLCs do this. But can we just form an ordinary partnership? Because okay, I would... some people. Go ahead. Some 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 bank won't lend to an LLC. Uh, so that would be a um, that would be a hurdle, you know. Yeah, and, and so, yeah, to form the exit strategies of some of the partners, of one or two of the partners. So, yeah, that has to be formulated by an attorney. So, like what you said, uh, to, we mm -hmm. cannot, we cannot do it just with, without an attorney, huh? I think Naven might step in on this one, but you were, you're going to want an attorney because if you okay. don't, there can be things that can happen down the road. Uh -huh. you, you, want to, you want to protect your clients, you want to protect yourself as well. Okay. So All right. I, I mean, I, we talk about forming partnerships to buy things as well. You and some are working on those type of things. And we would not, I'm just telling you what we would do. We would not do it without an attorney drafting it up. Uh huh. Because it protects everybody. Because first thing that happens, you can be friends today, and man, you get money involved, and it doesn't go the right way, and all of a sudden you've got lawsuits going every which way. And it's better to plan this up front and do this. The second point, 
I'm confused on because we do LLC lending all the time. That's what lenders, especially on the commercial side, want. They want to sell, they want a single property asset LLC. And there's a member that will sign the personal guarantee for the loan, which sounds like person number two is that person here. Uh-huh. So I don't we can talk more about that, but all right, sure. So yeah, yeah. I can call you mean, in another time. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank Great you. Talk Thank you. Me, because I think that's a way that like I've always I would love to walk in if there was one of our people that was trying to do it, but then COVID hit. I would love to freaking walk into Google or Facebook and do a meeting on this and put five or 10 of those guys together in an LLC and buy up about three buildings. Because it's a way to raise capital, diversify risk, and you can get a little better building because the problem is individuals, if we scrape together money and we buy some junky little building, on International Boulevard in Oakland, it's still going to be a junky little building in 10 years until they review everything. Now, that's a different strategy, but chances are if it's in and out Burger in San Ramon, in 10 years, it's still going to be a great building. So I hope, I don't know if that makes sense, but I think it's a great thing, again, working with attorneys and tax people. And we didn't even touch about these incomes that we're talking about. If you have the right tax people, you can generate break even or a loss for tax purposes, depending on your strategy. And if you're making 10% on your money, what is 10% with no income tax worth? Exactly. Yeah, so so we, we just need to um um have an attorney how about the, those real estate uh the the REIT um uh, um the, the REIT will will it do it I mean um isn't it the REIT is also an investment um uh, uh investment group great question yes a REIT is real estate investment trust that's another vehicle those are primarily the big guys on Wall Street that buys the Transamerica Tower or buys the Stone Ridge Shopping Center. It's one of my lessors. Retail Opportunity Investment Corporation, there are REITs on, on New York. Bricksmore is another one. Kimco, those are three biggies and they all buy shopping centers. They're all retail oriented. But yeah, so it's, it's working with attorney to find the right strategy. I think a REIT is more complex than an LLC, to put it together. Uh -huh. And if you invest in a REIT, you're just throwing your money in there like a mutual fund, and they're going to make the determination for you. You're not going to be able to buy the building that you want, uh -huh. unless you make the REIT. But again, I think from my experience, it's just been an LLC. REITs are generally bigger pools of money uh -huh. that's again just what i've seen in my opinion not not the gospel okay yeah um on another note i have a client who's looking for a coin laundry with real estate so um and it's very yeah. rare that do we there have was one that there was uh -huh. one that I, I don't know what his budget is, but there was one. Oh, yeah. is it is in the met is it in the MLS? No. Oh, okay. So how do you find your listing? You know, is it in Bisban or something? Um, there are some on Bisban, but we find them through just networking with brokers or members of Coastal. Oh, okay. All right. So I'll just look at GoStar then. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. You're welcome. All righty. Um, it's anyone else who has questions, please, please unmute yourself. We have um, Todd here ready to answer all your course. So please let me know. 
Okay. Yes, maybe. Easy day. <laughs> Alrighty, so if any, no one else has questions. So, um, uh, yep. Hold on a moment. I just have one quick question. Okay, another question. So do you do you do you give out classes for um, people who are venturing to go to commercial real estate from uh, residential from residential? Yes, we do. We have done a few. I tried to do something different today to be more what we're all dealing with at the time because everybody wants a listing right now yes and how, can, and how can we help our clients take advantage of this so that's kind of what i did today so i'm anxious to get feedback from the people that are on here of how this worked or didn't work or what different we could have done but yes we we were doing some meetings and i'll start those up again for people because we are looking to add a few people to the commercial side because as things get going we want to do more seminar type things and we've done them for clients and agents but then we need people because we can generate leads but we need people to help and so we're happy to talk with you about this when you have a moment whoever wants to we We have to structure this to where we want people to still sell their single family properties. And so I don't want anyone, unless they've just done commercial before, to come in and say, well, I'm going to make X number of dollars in a month or two or three, because it, 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 the timelines are a little bit longer. Unless you have cash buyers, then it doesn't matter. That's the same as residential. We can close in 20 days if we need to on a commercial deal. So yeah, happy to talk with you about that. If, if people want to do more commercial work, we're happy to talk with people about that. Because again, we are looking for some people that wants to be on that team. Great. Hey, Todd, this is Gene. Um, hey, how you oh, doing? Rich? All right. So, um, yeah, I want to, uh, you know, ask you how the market has been uh, in the past year for like the commercial sector, because as you know, everybody uh, was kind of shut down last year up, up to about now. So um, how has the market been and where do you see it going forward? So warehouses are still unbelievable. They're just people want warehouses. A few years ago, Three, four years ago, you could have got a warehouse for much cheaper. Now they've gone. I mean, it's in Oakland, you can see them for 300 bucks a square foot or more. And before they were 160, 170. Um, retail is still interesting. I was on the peninsula on Monday showing spaces for my chiropractor group. And that has, they're leasing up over there. There's hardly anybody can see. Rents are crazy. A one person was five bucks a square foot, which is $60 a square foot for a space. Plus they add triple nets on there. I mean, your little space is 10, 12 grand a month. But we're also seeing some retail, San Francisco, Oakland, a few different areas where if they don't get this changed, some restaurants, I can see them not opening up. I think, what, 100,000 restaurants aren't going to open up across the country, something like that. I see it going around. Cities are still wanting retail on the first floor, go up three, four, or five stories. We get a few questions about opportunity zones. But I look at these retail buildings and I'm like, and my mind is okay. Who do we put in there? What are we going to put in there? Office spaces. Some offices are still busy. Other people are going to be, I know, driving on the freeway because unfortunately or fortunately, however you want to take it, I drove the day after the lockdown last year. David knows this. <laughs> and you can drive. I was. My wife and I were going to the beach that Sunday after church. 
we were going 85 on 580 in Castro Valley. And that was just with traffic. People were flying by us. And if you know me, I don't drive slow. People were driving by me 100 miles an hour. Well, now I challenge you to come across 24 from 3 o'clock in the afternoon until 5.30 at night. You're going to be stop and go. 6.80 now, mm -hmm. stop and go up. Damn bill on, like it used to be. So I don't know where everybody is, but people are venturing out. But some office buildings are in a transition. I think for a person who worked out of their home office for eight years, I found that I enjoy being in the office. It feeds my soul, whether I, it's, I work better. And I was one that always got up and got dressed in dockers and a shirt. I didn't stay in my bathroom all day. I didn't sit there and watch television, but I do better being in an office. I just feel better. It's professional, it's the way it is. So we have some transitions going on here. And medical, as we see, has just been dominant. I think as baby boomers get older, that's an area that's not going to go down. I've noticed there's a new vet clinic over here where Chipotle was in the Safeway Center. There's another new one down at Alcosta. You see more um, vet hospitals going on because people bought dogs and cats during COVID. So you can watch the news and kind of look at trends and think about, okay, where are these people going to go? What type of building? Daycares are still going strong. So there's winners and losers, and it's how to pick what you think is going to be a winner. But again, I, this retail, I don't know, that's, that's going to be an interesting one. And I think the open air markets are doing better than the big box stores. But I also see these investors that are just look at Sears and JC Penney's and thinking, man, we're going to carve this up and we're going to put this, 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 this in here. There's going to be opportunities and there's going to be some, um, like the restaurant business has gotten hammered hotel business, airline business. I know there used to be, what, 50 flights a day from Seattle to the Bay Area, and I was checking some flights recently, and I've flown a last to a lot, and you fly from here to Seattle for a connection flight to the hub because they've shrunk down the, the flights. So it's taking all this data and seeing and I remember in the crash hotels, you could buy those things for 10 cents on a dollar. And I was sitting there looking at those and going, man, they make a great assistant living facility. To have the catering, kosher kitchen, room for a banquet hall, the rooms, depending on how they're designed. Uh, yeah. So it's looking at things. And, saying, okay, how do we go from here? But it seems like every building we're looking at, man, there's other people wanting to buy them. I don't know. Yeah, because uh, you mentioned that the thing that I've seen since I'm a base more in the San Francisco Peninsula area, um, I took a, you know, like a bike ride a couple months ago, um, Fishman's Wharf through downtown on a weekday. It's like a ghost town. <laughs> so it seems like, you know, where everyone go, right? So, um, so to me, it's like, uh, you know, there's certainly markets where probably things have um, not changed all that much, but uh, it just seems so uh, dreary to uh, see the, you know, busy streets like downtown San Francisco, basically empty and able to ride a bike through there leisurely, right? So, um, so that was kind of interesting, but, um, you know, I mentioned, uh, uh, probably like three months ago when you uh, when you were on and uh, I mentioned a cousin that uh, was planning to retire has a gas station I haven't spoken to him so I don't know what the status of that is but that's something I'll talk to you I'll talk with you uh, offline at some point sure yeah. 
Yeah, my last corporate job was at one Montgomery Street, San Francisco. And years ago, I don't even go to San Francisco anymore unless we have friends or family from in and out of that. I, I just don't go there. Um, we have everything out in the East Bay now. Years ago, we didn't have that great of restaurants and things, and now we have Fleming's and Ruth Chris. And I love Fleming's, by the way. It's just a phenomenal place. And a few Mexican restaurants that we go to, and we just don't go there anymore. I mean, if I leave this area, I'll go up to Napa. But San Francisco, who cares? But I will say, driving around on Monday, we started at 10, had, two, had a guy from Florida who was freezing to death, by the way. He had a stocking hat and a winter coat on. But we started at 10 o'clock and every center we went to, it was busy on the peninsula. We were in Daly City, Brisbane, South San Francisco, Millbrook. And they were all busy. I will say that right, wrong, or indifferent, small business got discriminated against in this COVID and big business got a pass. You look at Costco, Walmart, Best Buy, they were all open, but yet the little stores were not. So they're, it's very, very difficult. We have a friend that has six restaurants, 72 years old, been in the hotel restaurant business forever. Man, it just is. Somehow they've made it through and they think they're going to survive, but they had to lay off 60 people and they had people with them for years. There's some transitions going on. Hey, no, don't need to buy this. <laughs> All righty. For my whole multitasking, always. All righty. Well, that's pretty much what we have right now like if you guys have any more like detailed questions about like hey my client has this specific opportunity please reach out to Todd it's T-O-D only one D and then T-O-D at ROG Future or you can give a call here at the office and we can pass you on um, or even even the Facebook group like I'm pretty sure you're active like you see the notifications yeah <laughs> and then um, we'll pass all the messages to uh, uh, Todd and we go from there. The idea is that you guys have the tools to get uh, your clients with the best uh, possibilities in the market. And then also don't forget if you, this is something you can use as an advertising thing, right? So it works for yourself as in your marketing side as well. What you can do is say like um, buying and selling, blah, blah, blah. And then with commercial uh, opportunities or things like that. So we can work on that all the time and then we can make it like sound proper and professional with uh, Todd's help. So if you guys have any other questions, please let Todd know, or you can send me an email. I will be posting the recording today around, maybe like in an hour, it takes a little time to upload to the cloud and then follow all the process and put it up in YouTube. So I'll be sending an email with the link and as well, I will be posting it on Facebook in our internal group. If you are from out of Realty One and in this call, as um, Please, please drop your email so I can send you um, a copy of the link so you can rewatch this later on. And you can put it on the chat. So one last thing. You're professionals. You're highly paid consultants or highly valued consultants. You have knowledge and information that the average person doesn't have. And now how do you use that knowledge and experience and wisdom to help your clients? And yeah, we all like to have fun and everything, but your clients are in this to make money. And with that, money's a tool. And maybe they have a nonprofit that they want to help. Maybe they have other ideas that they want to do. You never know. They might want to start a business. The last company that I worked for, he bought his first house years ago in Daly City for 4500 bucks. He sold that a few years later and bought a triplex for 14 years. Then he sold that like five, 10 years later and he 
bought a house in Pacific Heights and he took the other money that was left and he started this business that he sold for 20, he got $20 million when it sold. That capital from those houses and the duplex is what funneled the house. He started up EPMG, which was he contracted RNs and emergency room physicians in Hawaii, Washington, California, Nevada, and Arizona. And when he sold the company, he got $22 million. So all of your clients have dreams and goals and desires, and maybe they, they haven't quite figured out how to get there. But you have the knowledge and ability to help. Now, not everyone's going to be a multimillionaire. That's just not the way the world works. But we can certainly help them to where they have information that they can make an informed decision. And that comes to you. So, who is there that you can help change their values? I got to tell you, when you help people with these success stories, like these clients that we deal with the duplex in the house, they're referring people to us. They are excited and telling people what a great job that we did. And we just did what, by advising them, finding out what they're looking for to help them. It's not always about making sales. Yes, we have to make sales to win. I get that. Those will come. Um, when you do the right things. Again, who's out there that you can help? Up to you. Well, that was multitasking. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Well, that's great. Um, so one last time, please contact Todd if you have any other questions, and then I will be posting this online. Thank you so much for everyone who show up. I know this is taking a uh, little bit of your time. And I know you guys work in realtor time. So, and we made it right on time. See, it's 11.54. So we deserve a, an award. Um, so but yeah. Real quick, feedback would be appreciated. Yes, that for sure. So if you guys can leave us comments in, when I post the um, the video on Facebook, you can leave us the comments on, uh, on the Facebook uh, post, or you can just send them directly if you wanna go more quiet about it. But uh, we are always happy to hear you what works and not works in these uh, meetings because we wanna, present them for you guys to be as a extra tool for your business. And that's what we're interested in. So please leave us the feedback. We're always happy to hear you guys out and to help you out. So please let us know if you guys need any help. And then, well, thank you so much. If anyone is missing, if I don't have your email because you don't belong to ROG, uh, please drop it on the chat. I'll be waiting. I'll be sending the email recording to everyone and we'll see you guys around. Thanks so much. Have an awesome day. Go get them. Thanks. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. It's a lot. It's a lot funner when people are in person. Yeah. Yeah, because the interaction is a little more natural. Yeah. Yeah.